Hello, my name is Brenda, and I hope you all feel welcome here. Today we're going to look at all of my works in progress and show you the progress I've made, because it's been a bit since I made a video. And then I'm also going to uh, do a little demonstration on how I use my lap stand when I'm at a table. And I have one finish, and I think that's all. Oh, and, and I have a new wall. Our new, the wall is the same. I put new pieces on the wall for winter. So we'll probably do that first. I'll insert a clip right here where I tell you the name of all of the things on the wall and show you a closer up video of them. This is My Hearts by Ute Senkel Weinberg. <clears throat> this is Past and Present by Rosewood Manor. This is the Linen and Threads 2020 Stitch Along. Mary Wigham by Needleprint. English Cottage Garden Sampler by Teresa Wensler. Evening in the Park by Chatelaine. Church on the Hill by Sampler Company. The stuff in the basket is the same as last time. Let Joy Be Unconfined by the Blue Flower. Let's Stay Home by Satsuma Street. Pine Tree Hill by Little House Needleworks. And I think this one was a freebie. Stand Ye in Holy Places by Yvette Ungricht, U-N-G-R-I-C-H-T. I did it on perforated paper to make it into a bookmark. Pretty in Pink, a Twee by Louise Henderson. I believe that was a class piece, so I think you can only get the pattern if you take the class from her. This is a darling plate that my friend Becca made, or didn't make, sent to me. It has this beautiful pattern on it that is cross-stitched in paint. It just looks cross-stitched. Thank you, Becca. This is the Fun Every Day Perpetual Calendar by Sam Sarah. And this is Namesake Sampler by My Big Toe. And I have to look at her name. Stitches Perfect asked me if I would show how I use my Elan lap stand sitting at a table because I mentioned in video number 19 if you'd like to know more about my Elon lap stand go back to video number 19 and I did a whole big video on how I use it where what my stitching area looks like up where I stitch so that will tell you everything you need to know but stitches perfect asked if I'd show how I use it at a table so I will insert a little video clip right here of how I use it at a table So you can have it sitting on the table <clears throat> up straight like this, but, and if you scooted your chair clear up close to the table, you could, and had a straight backed chair, you could kind of lean back and stitch. 
but this always feels like I'm trying to sit up straight so I can get close enough to it and my back gets tired after a while. So what I usually do is if I'm at a class or a retreat somewhere where I'm stitching at a table, <clears throat> I'll angle this arm towards me and use a um, weighted pillow. This one has sand in it, I believe. Any, any heavy object would work to put on here so it doesn't accidentally tip off. And that way I can lean back a little bit it gets a little bit closer to me and I can stitch. There you go. I do have one finish since my last video. It is Monster Wonder Whale by Al Forest Embroidery. I used the kit floss, but I put it on different fabric. This is 40 count Anya, A-I-N-E, by Under the Sea Fabrics. And opalescent, it's Anya Opalescent. And sorry, I've had it folded in half, so now it has a crease in it. It's a very light peach color fabric. It's beautiful. So that was very exciting to finish that. And I have my project card so I could tell you what it was on. But what was interesting was then I got to go back and look at it. I, don't, I started it on May 1st for Mania. And then it looks like I worked on it again on the last day of the year in 2020. And I worked on it that many days in January and then I finished it. So it was 12 days altogether. It was fun to see on these project cards when I went back and marked all the days that I worked on it. These project cards are by S. Ward Designs on Etsy. And this one is a two-year one. She has three-year ones and she also has five-year ones. And then she also has a couple of different formats um, that have different things up here and different things on the back. But they're great. They've been working great at helping me keep track. So that's my one finish. Now I just have a whole bunch of whips or works in progress. This was a new start. Right before the new year. <clears throat> I think in between Christmas and New Year I started this. It's called Shine On and it's in the Bonnie and Camille quilt book. This is a quilt book. This is a quilt. <laughs> this is the book telling you how to make this quilt. But at the very back, they have the quilt made into a cross stitch pattern called Shine On. It calls for Cosmo threads. I converted it to Sulky 12 weight cotton thread. This is my color palette. This is a bag, a Notions bag from, oh, just lost her name. The Brass Button Shop at Etsy. It goes with a, it matches a bigger bag. This one. But she has these little notions bags. And it worked perfect to keep my sulky 12 weight floss in. It. 
I'm doing mine on 18 count Ada with one strand of the Silky 12 weight cotton floss. And that's what I have so far. It's been a lot of fun to work on. And so far, I have worked on that for four days. Just in case you wanted to know. I'm probably the only one that thinks that that's interesting. Um, Beachcomber is the one that I showed. Let me just get it off the stand. The one I showed sitting at the table. It is by Carolyn Manning Designs. Will look like this when it's finished. She has this the shooting star. This this configuration is called the shooting star, and she has it in several different colorways, as long as several as well as several other different patterns similar to that. Mine's on 25 count Lugana even weave and I'm doing one over one with the called for DMC. Love this piece. Oh, it's one of those comfort pieces for me that I get out and work on when I just want something that will make me happy and will be easy to work on. in a bag from the Brass Button Shop. That's where that magnet went. I dropped a magnet earlier and can figure out where it went. There is a picture in here somewhere. This is Arcade by Long Dog Samplers. Mine is on 40 count conifer by Picture This Plus. I'm using silks for you silks in two different colors and I'm doing one strand over two fabric threads, one over two. I worked on this tree over here. I got this part done and, the, and more of that vine that goes clear across. Goodness. already making a mess. This is Pandemic, also by Long Dog Samplers. Let's see if one, no, we're going to have to take off the bottom. Mine is on 36 count linen with silky 12 weight cotton. The most of it is in the blendable color called cactus. And then the animals are in So 
this is Cactus and it is 4086. <clears throat> and the animals are in a solid color, 1095. And the back stitching is done with one strand of DMC 520 for the green back stitching. And 3810 for the animals, the turquoise color back stitching. There we go. This is another one that I like to work on when I'm tired and I just need some comfort stitching. It's very easy to work on. Pattern Keeper says I'm right at 20%, <laughs> which is a little depressing. I thought I was a little further than that, but it's kind of cool to know exactly how far you are. Kingdom of Books by Make It With Your Own Hands. Mine was a Russian kit that I bought at mybobbin.com and it was shipped from Russia. It took about a little over a month as I recall. I'm using the kit threads, but I did not use the kit fabric. It came with 14 count Ada. And I changed it to 18 count Ada. Oh, there it is. Sorry. <laughs> uh, from Vintage Needle Arts store on Etsy and the color caramel cream. And I have one book done. The pattern All right, the titles of the books are in Russian and this kit came from Russia, so that totally makes sense. But my friend Mary translated the titles for me and they are all books about the Netherlands, which was confused me at first. And then a couple of viewers told me that there is a thing in the Netherlands called that that are the canal houses that line the canals in the Netherlands. Here is a picture. And they do look just like that. They look like they're these tall skinny buildings along the canals that look like books. So I had several viewers tell me that's why the books are all about the Netherlands because this is a pattern about the canal houses in the Netherlands that look like books. And then, oh, I have this written down somewhere else. The one viewer that was telling me all about it thought that the books in the center there and the gates was this building maybe in the Netherlands, which is a famous building, but it's been a couple months now and now I can't remember what it's called. I'm sure several of you know and will maybe comment and remind me what it's called, but I thought that was pretty cool. So my friend Mary translated all the names for me into English and I'm going to stitch the names in English so that the books make sense to me. I remember, oh, let's see what's in here. The 
this is the one book that I have done. So starting at this book and moving across. The first one says Rotterdam Architecture. The next one says Peter the First. The next one says Tulip Varieties Garden Designs. The next one says Netherlands Culture and Traditions. Then Amsterdam Channels and Bridges. And the Wilhelmus, which is Dutch for the William. This is, she says, this is the national anthem of the Netherlands. The green book is, says Utrecht Museums, which Utrecht is a large city in the Netherlands. And then the two brown books on either side of the gate say Kingdom of the Netherlands, volume 17 and 18. And on the other side of the gates, going across, the green book says Royal Day. The purple book says Windmills. The blue book says The Hague, Netherlands, 14 routes and 10 maps. The pink one doesn't say anything. The red one says The Hague Museums of Escher. The brown one says Paintings of Vincent van Gogh. And the green one on the end says Rembrandt van Rijn, the artist. So I'll have to do some charting as I go to make the words fit in English. But I thought it would be cool to have it in English so that I could know what the names of the books were. I'm trying to do a half of a book a month with my friend Sharon. And anyone else who wants to stitch along with us. But that's kind of what we're shooting for is a half a book a month. This is Cricut Collection Spring. It was a mania start. <coughs> Back in May. And as you may know, a lot of my mania starts are assigned to a particular month. And this one was assigned to February. So I am hoping to finish it by the end of February. Monster Wonderwell was assigned to January, which I finished in January. So I have SP almost done with the R. Mine is on 32 count water lily with the called for DMC. Huckleberry Farm by the Blue Flower. I am almost finished with the top section. I just I think I still have a little bit of flowers down here to finish. I can't remember. Oh, leaves. I think I have some leaves to finish down there. Maybe not. It looks done. And then I'll be moving on to the next middle third. But that's where it is so far. This is 40 Count Elegance by Silk Weaver that I ran through the wash a few times to lighten it up a little. And I started it last year in the middle of the pandemic. So it's not the called for colors. It was, I pulled the, I pulled them if I had them, I had a few of them. And then I pulled the DMC conversion and chose an over dyed cotton in my stash that was a close color. One strand of floss over two fabric threads. Kringles by Little House Needleworks. Doing this with my daughter Marie. 
and my friend, Kim. We're trying to get a room a month finished. Wow, we're going to have to take off three sides to show the whole thing. I did, oh, the doors in December, and I don't think I finished them until partway into January, and then this was the square for January, or the room, I should say, and then I'll do this room this month. And I need to get caught up on the roof. Maybe doing the rest of the roof at the end. Who knows? Lost No More. This is a Dimensions kit. The artwork is by Greg Olson. And this kit, I just realized the other day, is it has a, a copyright on it of 1998. I probably bought this in the early 2000s. And it's been in my stash since then. I started it last year, almost exactly a year ago, on February 26th, and it's been my um, daily 30 piece, but there were lots of sections in there when I didn't work on it. I don't have the dates transferred onto this card yet from 2020, but this is how well I'm doing in 2021 at working on it every day. Pretty good. I do 30 minutes at least. Unless it's a day that I don't work on it and then I don't work on it. This is the kit fabric and the kit floss. I finished this section down here and started to do the back stitch. I got the lamb here, sheep. I don't know if it's a sheep or a lamb. I think it's a lamb. Back stitched down here. And then I'll start doing the back stitching on everything that I can that's already done. I like to do the back stitching as I go. I don't like to wait until the end to do it all. So I, fin I did the back stitching on all the rocks and the lamb. And then I'll start on his anything I can do on him. It's not quite... This is a about halfway over but I am not to the top yet so it is not quite halfway done The kit fabric is 18 count Ada. And most of the time you're using two strands of floss. There's a couple places where you use three strands of floss doing just a half cross. And then there's some places where you're only using one strand of cross doing a half cross. Or maybe two strands doing just a half cross in the background. This is another brass button bag. This is Band of Roses 1845 Antique Sampler by Cross Stitch Antiques. 
and I'm very excited because I finished all of the alphabets at the top and I get to start on this rose border. So that's very exciting. It's DMC, the called for DMC floss on 40 count know the project cards in there somewhere. 40 count maritime white by Legacy. No, by Lakeside. By Lakeside Linens. And I'm doing one strand of floss over two fabric threads. For this dark blue at the top, I did switch to a silk just so it would cover better in that really dark blue color. And I switched to a Vera Soie silk. Number 14, 16. And then this, the next alphabet down in the lighter blue, this one is Dinky Dyes Silk in Midnight Blue. No, not Midnight Blue. Pacific Ocean. Dinky Dyes Pacific Ocean. My goodness. Let's see if we can hold it still for a minute. And I have like eight stitches right here, starting the first rows. Mm, let's show this side. Right side up. The New Normal, also by Long Dog Samplers. Mine is on 40 count linen, white linen. And I'm also using sulky 12 weight threads on this piece. And this is what I have so far. This bubble is fun because it's full of cats. A big goose and a whole bunch of cats. They're so cute. This uh, vertical format project bag is by Victoria's Crafty Room. She has an Etsy store as well as a floss tube. And I just chose my own colors of floss. I'll have the colors listed in the description box. But these are all 12 weight sulky cotton. And then Victoria made me this cute little um, thread holder to put my little scraps in until I, the next time I use that color. Oh, I told you last time that, I believe, that I wasn't very happy with this really light green. I didn't like how hard it is to see. So I tried this uh, darker green right here. I don't think I'm going to rip all of this out. I think I'll just use this color again somewhere else for balance. 
but I may do this um, sea monster, seahorse, humongous seahorse, whatever this is right here. I may do that in this other color green so it stands out more. Haven't decided yet. I'll wait till the end and see what I think. Sometimes a mistake or something just really bothers me. And every time I look at it, I think, oh, that has got to come out. That's just bothering me for like the first few weeks after it happened. And then I think, oh, I'll just wait till the very end and then I'll fix that. Well, a year later, I get to the very end and I don't even remember. I have to think about it to remember where the mistake is. And then I look at it again and I think, I think it looks fine. I'm just going to leave it on there. <laughs> it's funny what time will do for you. Did not work on that one. Oh, honestly, there's one in the back. That I didn't get out. I think all that's left is the full coverage pieces. This is Four Seasons, the mini, I'm doing the mini version by Heaven and Earth Designs. The artwork is by Jasek Yasek Yerka. And this is what I have so far. So fun to see the gazebo and the little blue bear things start to show up. Let's talk about these for a minute. I saw this on another on someone's Instagram photo and I thought, what are those? I need those to keep my threads under control. This is a package of bobbins that I bought on Amazon from Bob Ease, B-O-B-E-E-Z. Um, and it says on here, there's 32 in the package. It says 32 Beadsmith Bob Ease. I'm trying to remember what they're called. I think they're called bobbins. They're used in a um, Japanese, they're very popular to use in a Japanese uh, weaving it weaves a cord. There's a name for it and I can't think of it right now. Anyway, I saw it on someone else's Instagram photo using it like this. And so I have used it and I loved it, but it was like flopping around. It just has a hole in the middle. Oh, and it pops open like this. And then you weave your threads around and then you pop it back closed so they stay in there. And then it just has a hole in the middle. So I had them on there, but they were flopping all around. You know, you flip it over to, to end your thread and they're all hanging down and they, I thought this is driving me crazy. I want them stuck to the fabric. So I thought, well, I'll just glue some magnets to them. So I glued a magnet to the back of them and then I have another magnet on the back. And then I was talking to my daughter-in-law, Hannah, about it. And I said, these would be really cute if I just glued a button or something to the front. And she said, oh, I can do that. So she made a whole bunch with darling little things glued to the front of them. These were two she gave me for this project. I picked a squirrel and a ladybug because I thought they went well with this design. So she glued the magnets to them and she put the cute little decorations on the front. I think they're so cute. And she has an Etsy store. And I said, well, you should sell those in your Etsy store. And she said, Oh, okay. I, I will. Because I said, these are very useful. I think someone else might want these. So her Etsy store is called Sunshine Mama's Designs. 
Sunshine Mama's Designs. It's my daughter-in-law, Hannah. I'm not biased at all, but I think her stuff is really cute. <laughs> so if you go to Etsy and type in Sunshine Mama's Designs, you'll find her shop. She also has some needle minders. Look at this cute little snowman that she hand painted. And here's two more. A little cat and a little sheep. And hang on. I'm trying to remember what she calls these. Parking bobbin. She calls these a parking bobbin because we didn't know what else to call them. They just work really well if you use the parking method on a full coverage design and you have these threads hanging down that you're trying to keep under control. That's what I use them for. Check out her Etsy store if you'd like one. Oh, and she has a coupon code for me, her mother-in-law. Imagine that. Um, and the coupon code is Handwork Maniac. That's my channel name. And then you'll get the friends and family discount. How cool is that? I almost forgot, oh my goodness. If you would like to meet Hannah, you can go back to the stocking report, which was Thanksgiving of not last year. It was the very first year I was doing videos, the Thanksgiving. I don't know what video number it is, but it's called the stocking report. It was done on Thanksgiving day. I believe that was 2018, November of 2018. And all of my kids show their stockings and their spouses say hello. So if you'd like to meet Hannah, you can go back to that video and meet her. And wasn't that nice of her to make these for me? All right. This one needs some parking bobbins on it. I just haven't put them on yet. My goodness. This is also by Heaven and Earth Designs. Called a stitching shelf. It will look like this when it's finished. I have the version that does not have the um, medallion in the middle. And oh, threads are out of control. This is where I am so far. I finished this window over here and then decided that I wanted to go down and do this section next. So I could get down into the, the top strip is spring and the next strip is summer. It's all beautiful greens. That is on 25 count even weave with the called for DMC 1 over 1, Heaven and Earth Designs. Four Seasons is also on 25 count even weave 1 over 1. Oh my goodness. The mess we have today. I'm completely out of practice because it's been so long since I made a video. third full coverage design is Disneyland by Nenny Designs, N-E-N-I. I've seen this pattern all over on several stores on Etsy. If you search for Disneyland, you'll find it. Um, I have there, there's also a couple of different versions. There's one that has over a hundred colors on it. Mine is the one that has 50 colors. I have the 50 color version. And this one doesn't have its parking bobbins on it yet either, but I will be doing that. I finished to this part up here, finished all this down here next to the Matterhorn. These two kids in the, they're in a teacup, on the teacup ride. You're just starting to see the Mermaid Lagoon right here next to the submarine. And then this is part of It's a Small World.
This is 40 Count Dwarf by Picture This Plus, and I'm doing one strand of the Called For DMC over two fabric threads. And I think the last one Oh dear. Magnet Mayhem. I have to get the pattern off because I can't show you the pattern. But I always have the pattern magneted to my stitching, close to where I'm stitching, so I don't have to look away. This is Peaceable Kingdom by Catherine Theron Designs. It's a class piece. You can only get it, the pattern from her if you take the class from her. Her website is therontraditions.com. That will tell you her teaching schedule. And I also heard that she's thinking about doing some online classes. So it might be possible to take a class from her online and get her designs. I'm working on this section right here that's all one over one. It's taking forever. This is 32 count linen. I don't know what kind it was given to us as part of the kit for the class. And if you go back to my uh, whip parade right at the beginning of this year, the January video, um, I unrolled the whole thing so you could see the top part. <laughs> I'm not going to do that for you today, sorry. I think that that is all of the whips. And I don't have any stash or, or haul. I have a lot of stash, but I do not have any new haul to show you. So I think that's everything. And hopefully I'll be back uh, sooner this time in like two or three weeks in March sometime. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.